Okay, now we're going to talk about dividing with decimals. Okay, so here's my first problem. Okay, I've got a whole number over here, but then I have a decimal in here. Okay, so not really a big deal. All I have to do at this point is if the decimal is being divided into, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to move it up here, and then that's pretty much it. I'm just going to kind of ignore it and just work, work the rest of the problem out. Okay, so 7 goes into 2, no, goes into 25, yes, it goes in 3 times. Okay, so that gives me 21. Okay, 4, drop down to 5, 7 goes into 45, 6 times. Okay, 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, 3, now just bring down that 5, 35, 7 goes into 35. Um, five times. Okay, so the five is behind the decimal, so this also goes behind the decimal. So my answer is 36 and five tenths. All right, let's work out another one. And we're actually going to work out probably quite a few decimal division problems, just because there's a few little situations that you might encounter. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do another, another pretty straightforward one. I'm just pulling these from the book. Um, 237.6 divided by 33. Okay, so again, no decimals there. Okay, fine. There's a decimal here, so we're just going to bring it straight up. So it's already in our answer. All right, so 33 goes into 23. Nope. 33 goes into 237. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, best estimate, I would say, let's, let's try about 7. See where that gets, because I know 3 times 7, or 30 times 7 is about 210, so this will probably get me there. All right. 231. All right, I don't think I can get much closer than that, so we're going to put a 7 there. Um, 231. 6. And then drop down this 6. 33 goes into 66. Two times. My answer is 7 and 2 tenths. All right, so let's change it up a little bit. All right, let's do one where we have a decimal going into the divisor. So I'm trying to find a trying to find one. Okay, well, let's do point four going into two hundred and ninety-five. All right. Well, let's see. So now here's the first situation where we have a decimal in our divisor. Okay. So this is the number dividing into 295. Okay. We cannot have this. This has to be a whole number. Okay. So what we do is we get this decimal and we just pick it up and move it to the end. Because if we have a decimal at the end, four point, whatever, that's a whole number. That's four. Okay. But... I can't just pick up a decimal and move it and call it good. I got to do something over here, too. So think about in 295, where would the decimal be? It'd be at the end, okay? So if I pick this up and move it over one, I have to do the same thing here. So I'm going to pick it up, move it over one, so my decimal is here now. Well, what should I put in this open space? I'll put a zero. Okay, so now I've done all that. I'll kind of erase this. So now basically I've got... 4, and then this decimal is here. I'm just going to bring it straight up if we need it. 4 goes into 2,950. All right, well, 4 goes into 2. Nope, 4 goes into 29. Well, 4 times 7 is 28, so I'm guessing it's 7. Okay, 4, bring 5 down. 4 goes into 15. No, but 4 times 3 is 12. So put a 3 there, minus 12. 3, now I'm going to bring this 0 down. So now 4 goes into 30. Well, doesn't go in evenly, and that's okay. So 4 goes into 30. Uh, 4 times 7 is 28. So we'll put another 7 there. Minus 28. And we got a 2 here. Well, here's the thing. Now that we're working with decimals, we no longer have remainders. Okay? Remainders are not allowed. Okay? So what I need to do is I just need to keep going. So I'm going to have numbers beyond the decimal, and that's fine. 
Sometimes I may have to go several numbers behind the decimal to get to a stopping point. Okay, so I've got the two. Normally you would do, okay, 7 out of 37 remainder 2. Well, we're not doing that anymore. Okay, so normally I would, so I would normally just drop a number down, right? Well, there's no number to drop down there. What should I do? I'm going to put a zero. Because if I put a zero after the decimal, does this change the value of this number? No. It just gives us kind of a number to work with. So I'm going to drop the zero down. Now I have 20. 4 goes into 20 five times, and it works out evenly. All right. So 4 goes into 2,950, 737, and 5 tenths times. All right. So let's try decimals in both the dividend and the divisor. All right. So let's do 3.1. And 10 and 261 thousandths. All right, so lots of numbers find the decimal. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, there's a decimal in here. No problem. There's a decimal here. Uh, we got to do something. Okay, so remember, what do we do when we have a de decil decimal in the divisor? We have to move it to the very end. Okay, so pick it up, move it. So here's my decimal there. And if I do it here, I have to do the same thing here. So pick it up, move it over. Okay, this is where my decimal is now. I'm going to bring it straight up. There's my decimal. Okay, so now I'm just going to work it out. Ignore the decimals. Um, 31 goes into 10. Nope, 31 goes into 102. I'm going to guess three times. 31 times 3. I really didn't need to work this out. All right, minus 93. 12, 9, um, that's 9 and 0. Okay, so that's just 9. Alright, so I'm going to droop. I think I erased the 6. Okay, bring the 6 down. 31 goes into 96. Well, I know it's... Oh, I forgot to put the 3 up there. Three. Okay, 31 goes into 96. 3 times, because we know 31 times 3 is 93. Alright, 3. And then we're going to bring down the 1. 31 goes into 31, one time. Okay, not too bad. All right, let me do one more where we're going to have to add some numbers to get this to work out evenly. Let's do 3.5. Okay, let's do 3.5 goes into... I'm just making this up, so I'm hoping it works out. Um, 10. So how many times does 3 and 5 tenths go into 10? Well, let's go ahead and again, no decimals there, whatever. Is there a decimal there? Yes. So we have to move, pick it up, move it to the end. All right, so decimal goes there. All right, so there's not a decimal in here, but if there was one, it'd be at the, the end of the number. So let's put the decimal there, move it over, put the decimal there. Now we got to put a zero in that spot. All right, so now we have 35 goes into 100. And I can already tell this isn't going to work out evenly. So hopefully we don't have to go too far past the um, decimal to get this to work out. All right, 35 goes into, well, 100. Um, I don't think it'd go in three times because three times 30 is 90. Three times 5 is 15. That's 105. So we're only going to go in twice. So that's 70. All right, so already we're at a point where, okay, I need to, I cannot have 2 and a remainder 30. So I need to add a 0 past, after the decimal and drop it. 35 goes into 300. Well, I'm going to think this one out. Oh, no, it's not 10. I don't think it's 9. 3 times 8, 25, but it's 8. Let's try this. 3 times 8, 24, 280, yeah. All right. Okay, 20. Okay, so can't have 2.8 remainder 20. Got to add another zero. But let's see, 335 goes into 200. Well, uh, I think six is going to be too much. Let's go five. This might be the longest problem ever. So we'll do 5, 175, 
And add another zero. Holy smokes. There's a lot of zeros. All right. Let's see. So, well, 280 times 8. Okay, so I know it's probably got to be 7. I'm just going to subtract 35 from that because I know 35 times 8 is 280. Take away 135. That's the same thing as 35 times 7, right? 245. All right, and I'm pretty sure I picked a doozy of a problem. This is not going to work out evenly anytime soon. Sometimes you have to do that. All right, five. Well, can't have a remainder five. Add another zero. Okay, this will teach me to make up problems. All right. Okay, goes in once. Minus 35. 15. Another zero. 150. Oh, please let this work out. I don't think it's going to, though. 35 times 4. 140. All right, so we are going to run into an instance where we're going to have something called a repeating decibel. Hold on really quick. 4. Okay, minus 140. Gives us 10. Another 0. Now, look, an art, uh, so I have 100. Well, I'm right back to my original problem. 35 goes into 100, and we know it doesn't go in evenly. So what that means um, is it's going to repeat, okay? You probably won't have problems in, I, I actually, I'm reasonably sure you won't have problems like this in your assignment because they've worked them all out. They know, okay, this is going to go maybe two places, but it's going to end. Okay, I randomly just pick numbers out and this is what happens. I get a never ending problem. So, but this was just an example um, of how you would go about solving. You know, sometimes you have to do one, two, maybe even more zeros um, after the decimal, but eventually, hopefully, it'll come to an end where you have zero here instead of having to keep going and going and going and going. All right, so let me work out one more, and this time I'm going to get a problem from the book. All right, let's see. Let's do 10 and 54 hundredths divided by 17 hundredths. Okay. Pull this one from the book. Fingers crossed it's going to work out. It's going to end. All right. So, got decimal here. Not a problem. Ooh, I can't see that, can you? Okay. All right. So, don't worry about that. Got a decimal here. Yeah, got to do something. Okay. So, I'm going to pick my decimal up. How far do I have to move it to get to the end? I got to go one, two. Okay. Put it right there. Okay. Got to do the same thing here. Pick it up. Move it over. One, two. One, two. All right. There's my decimal. Okay. Now, I'm just going to work my problem out. So I have 17. Now my problem is basically 1,054 divided by 17. Okay, 17 goes into 10. Nope. 17 goes into 105. Well, let's see. Uh, let's make an estimate. 17 is about 20. 105 by 100. So probably 5. Let's go up to 6. I bet 6 will get this close. All right, 102. All right, so 102, 3, and bring down the 4. Oh, look either. Finally, beautiful. 17 goes into 34 two times. So my answer is 62. Now, I don't really need the decimal there, so if you are rewriting the answer somewhere, you would just write 62, okay? Because we don't usually write number 62 and then we'll dot after that, okay? All right, so good luck on your assignments.